Actually, I just made a video of Kingston first day of training and said I was going outside to do his flirt pole session. I actually had it sitting on the outside. You can't see um, on the video. Maybe I can try to turn this a little bit. I've got a doorway over there. It's covered by a sheet of plywood and the flirt pole is sitting on the other side of it. I actually want to uh, get it on video a little bit just to kind of document. The other day he wasn't biting really good. I think we're going to get a little difference out of him today I'm hoping than what we had last night. So biting really good. He, he did get hauled uh, yesterday and, and the day before. So last night when we made her stop, of course, was the reason he was um, acting a little bit different. Uh, and of course, the person's house that I stopped by, I've got to send this video to her so she can see it. Um, I told her to give me three days with this dog and I'd turn him into a beast. Um, didn't take three days. All it took was letting him uh, set, rest up, not be hauled. Boy. Boy. <laughs> like using a flirt pole with a dog this big because his cord, when he starts pulling, he's going to snap it. Um, what we'll do is I'll get a uh, bite sleeve, puppy bite sleeve or a bite pillow and or big tug, just depending on what he's going to bite on best to start with and back tie him out here. Ouse! And that, that yelp was because he didn't want to let go of it. Um, I know his owner understands that as well, but uh, we'll get whatever he can bite on best and back tie him out here. I'll back tie him to the fence. I don't want to take him back tied to the tree out there because it's just a little too muddy. And uh, good boy. But. As you can see, tons of drive. That bite came back to him real quick. It's uh, a good dog, real good dog. I like what I see with him. Uh, can't wait to get him trained, but it's going to take some time and see the finished product myself. So anyhow, let's see if we can get him out. Oh. You heard him growl there. <laughs> out. He don't want to let go and sometimes they will squeal when they are made to let go of things because they don't want to let go. And of course, we're probably going off the, the camera plenty of times with this. He was pulling really good earlier and he's kind of settled down. He's not pulling. I really want him pulling rather than this uh, kind of standing still. So we will work on that. We'll go to Poland, which is building his drive quite a bit more. And we'll change things as we go along. Uh, change to a certain extent, but when he's going good and hard, there's pulling good again, good boy. When he's going good and hard, we let him hit it, bite it. We don't want to keep going to the point that he's slowing down and not trying as hard. If you want a reward, 
when the dog or pup is trying to harvest. Good boy. Good puppy. Dog's going to freeze on the bite. At this point we'll start with the bite command which is packing and we'll repeat it packing over and over again so it starts to imprint into his head that packing means bite um, of course we change that up later on from rag tug, bite sleeve bite suit might even do some leg work with him and eventually some muzzle work where he's not getting the bite but he is getting to get the person in an attempt to bite without the equipment on because they just they, they start to realize the difference um, the flirt pole you don't want to you don't want to let them hit the thing in the exact same spot all the time. You want them to hit it in different places. That way the dog don't get used to being rewarded in one exact spot all the time. This right now is kind of the things about being raised in the house a little bit different. He's He's not wanting to jump up and bite it because it's in my hand, which tells me that he's not been allowed to jump up and take things out of hand. But I was shaking it enough there that he came up, and if he if he won't bite things in my hand, then he won't bite things on my arm or on my leg. And if he won't bite things in the arm or on the leg, then obviously you can't make a protection dog out of a dog that's afraid to bite. Um, He's definitely got it. We'll bring it back out a lot better. You'll see a difference over the next couple of days, next weeks. Um, I'm gonna play around with him a little bit more. I'm gonna go ahead and shut this off because I really need to be focused on the dog more than focused on everybody in this video. And uh, like I said in the other video, I'll say it again. Yeah, I've got the old ratty jacket on. Um, you don't train dogs in a suit and tie. You don't get cleaned up, dressed up to train dogs. That is somebody making a video for all of you and trying to make themselves look look more uh, professional, more presentable, whatever. But nobody gets dressed up to go train dogs. Um, keep watching, everybody. Um, Hit the subscribe button, hit the bell so you get all the notifications. Kind of stay in touch. There he spit it out on his own. Um, you'll see what I'm doing with him day to day, start to finish. Used to be I didn't give all this stuff away. I didn't didn't go into so much detail and give it away for free on Facebook. Um, of course, because I charge to do this, I don't do it for free. And the other thing is, is I really don't want to give a lot of certain people out there all of the knowledge that I have uh, accumulated over the years and from working with uh, different professional trainers, um, one of them really being uh, what I consider to be the best trainer in the world who is Martin Pezja. Had him here for a three-day seminar a few years back um, ended up we were you know here six six days um, wasn't here here it was I rented a horse barn and we had a lot of downtime we used to message every each other every single day and Martin would send me lots of videos um, he would send me videos of him working dogs and one of the biggest reasons that he did this is he sent me a video one day and I'm gonna put this up so we're not holding it in front of the dog he sent me a video one day and asked me what I thought about the dog and 
or, or the training or how it was going. I don't remember exactly how it was. And I asked him, do you want my honest opinion? And he says, well, yes, of course. That's why I sent you the video. And I told him everything that I seen that the dog was doing wrong. And I said, yes, it's a good dog, but you know, it's doing this wrong, this wrong, this wrong. But this could be better, this could be better, and so forth. And it was a few minutes before he answered me back. And he told me that was exactly what he needed was someone to help him pick apart the videos and what was going on, what they seen and didn't see. Um, I was trying to show you, he, he was, he, he knows what a fork pole is, he can smell it. He's, he's going to end up grabbing a string probably and pulling it in. But every time he would send a video to somebody, they would basically give him a pat on the back and say, good job, Martin, great dog, great, great training, great job. And even the best need somebody to pick apart their videos. Um, he also told me that he knew there was three or four things in the video, but I spotted a few others that he didn't even spot until I point, pointed them out to him. And he is a SV judge, and when he's not competing at the World Championships, whether it's WSV or the FCI, um, he's judging them a lot of times when he's not competing. And, uh, so yeah, he was pretty impressed with me spotting things that he didn't uh, spot. And for that reason, he sent me loads and loads of training videos over the years. Uh, most of them I saved on my old computer. Um, and as I promised him, I never shared them with anybody. He asked me never show these to anybody because you just don't want people to see the different mistakes and things during training because most people are putting out videos of a dog that's already trained, trained perfect, and perfect videos. They're not showing these actual training, what it's really like and all the mistakes and all the beginning. And he does have videos that he shows at the seminars that he does all around the world. And he won't give those to anybody or sell them to anybody either because he doesn't want them sent around, showed around to different people. But yeah, over the years, I'm going on 42 years of breeding and training German Shepherds. I've worked with a lot of other people. Um, over the years, most most of them, I just don't even care to mention the name, don't even care to remember them as far as that goes. Um, once, once I got with Martin, he really changed a lot of my training techniques. He opened my eyes to a lot of things, and um, so I do things different now. Um, you can see Kingston here. He's he can't see that thing anymore. It's not sticking up because he knocked it down, but he's he's sniffing for it. He's hunting. Um, and he's back behind me in the corner now, but he's he's hunting around. He's got a nose. I mean, I'm going to tell you, he's got the driving things. He'd make a hell of a law enforcement dog, um, which is exactly what I would expect out of him. This is what I put out on a regular basis, uh, really consistent. Um, <clears throat> My litters anymore aren't like my litters in the past. I've got litters that are 100% workable. Every single pup in the litter is workable and trainable. Whereas years ago, um, like, like a lot of other people, one or two workable dogs and the rest of them were pet quality at best. And I went through a lot of dogs. I imported a lot of dogs over the years 
and I was bringing in 10 to 14 pups a year out of top dogs for a lot of years in order to sort through them to find one or two that would fit into my uh, breeding program and there was a lot of years I didn't even keep one or two and every single one of those dogs I usually ended up once I decided not to keep them once I decided they wasn't as good as what I already had I would let them go usually cheaper than what I paid for them just to get them off of my property at that point um, I line breed heavy on Cato Artar Bastet, or as in the Czech Republic, they pronounce it Kato. Um, here in the United States, we all say Cato. Um, Cato, or Kato, was the absolute best dog of our time. He was very intense drive, very strong defense. Um, it was his drive and defense that cost him the world championships in 2013 and that's that's uh, something we can go over another day as you can see this boy is wanting to work I need to get him out here and do some more bite work with him in a little larger area than the training room here where we can move around a little bit better and get him put back up and um, you know maybe another time I get on here if y'all like hearing about stuff like this um, leave me a comment drop me a comment in the comments and I'll be sure to tell you more tell you more about my experience my experience with different dogs over the years different lines, why a line breed, why uh, certain dogs, um, but other than that, everybody have a good day, good evening, I hope you stick around to follow us till the end, um, share this video, this video, the other video that I just made, um, share them on Facebook or wherever, and maybe we'll get some more followers. Um, by all means, share them on whatever group you want to and criticize me as much as you want. I've got a pretty thick skin. Um, I found out over the years that most of the people criticizing other people's videos can't even teach a dog to sit, let alone pick up a stick. And um, So by all means, share it around, have at it, talk about it, bash me, whatever. Makes me no difference. I'm used to it. Have a nice day, everybody.